Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. DraftKings Week 6. Monday Night Football fantastic game between the Dallas Cowboys and the Los Angeles Chargers. Players coming back from injury. We have a new injury that we have to discuss because it's going to impact how the Chargers play this game. We're going to go over every single bit of it. So thank you guys for being here. Why don't we just jump right into it? You guys know all about the cheat sheet. You also know uh, how you did this weekend. Leave me a reply down below. Let me know how your weekend went. Drop a reply. The replies are important. The replies are actually important to a streamer. So like, I don't know, say anything you want. Say like fluffy bunny in the reply. I don't care. Put an emote of a bunny, I don't, an emoji, whatever you want to do. Subscribe to the channel, ring the notifications bell, drop a like on the video and let's go. He's a legend. Make sure that you are subscribed to the Al Smizzle Fantasy Football channel. Every single Monday, I come out with my weekly recap video going over my cash game lineup, uh, my tournament lineups, my high stakes, the 150 that I put in the Millionaire Maker, everything else that happened in the week. We go over the cheat sheet for the channel members and Twitch subscribers. That's $5 a month, smizzle.tv slash join. If you wanted to go follow, look for Al Smizzle Fantasy Football or just go to smizzle.tv slash FF. The recap video will be up about midday on Monday. So if you're watching this, preparing for Monday Night Football, that video will be up soon, if not already, after I stream live on Monday morning over on Twitch. Let's take a look at the, the, this slate really quickly. Couple of things we've got to talk about. First of all, Cowboys one and a half point favorites. Uh, the total here is 51. Uh, Austin Eckler coming back from injury. Full participant in the last practice. They held him out of the game in week four when he really, really, really wanted to play. Made no sense to play him with the bye week coming behind it in week five. Give him two extra weeks to get back. I think he's like fully ready to go. Like almost Cooper Cuppian, where like Cup came back and was immediately thrust into full workload because he had already been practicing for a while. Not with the team because he was on IR, but like aside, alongside the team. He was already being ramped up as opposed to like Jonathan Taylor who did not play in preseason, was not ready to go, was not in football shape. I think Eckler is more on that Cooper Cup return train as opposed to the other way. So I'm playing him as though nothing had ever happened against this Dallas team. The other injury, and this popped up during the game's Sunday. The Chargers added Palmer to the injury report for Monday's game, listing him as questionable with a groin injury. There was no report. There was no nothing. He was a full participant at practice all week and like picked up the injury at some point on Saturday. He's getting treatment clearly on Sunday because once he gets treatment, they have to report it. So as he goes, if he is in, then, you know, if they are able to get him going, it's not structural uh, issues or all then everything's going to be as it is. Keenan Allen will be the one. Eckler will be uh, the the second guy in terms of target market share. Parmel, Palmer will run his routes. Um, and then Quentin Johnson will play behind him. But if Palmer's out, Quentin Johnson moves into a much larger role, uh, already running more routes since the absence of, of Mike Williams. He's been elevated to the three guy instead of the four guy. So clearly already playing more snaps, running more routes. But he'll be thrust into a high leverage high impact role, and is probably going to be one of the highest played players on the slate, and for good reason. That's all the injury news. Let's talk about the captains. Number one, Austin Eckler. He's great. I think that you should play him in captain, and you don't even have to make rules when you do it. You do whatever you want. Uh, he does get, like, <clears throat> a really solid amount of target market share, 12% plus, but because of the absence of Mike Williams, because they're not really involving the tight ends as much, I could see him... In this particular game, especially if Palmer is hobbled, having like a seven, eight, nine target game. If that's the story that you're telling, then you could clearly just tie Herbert to him. It's going to be pricey with 5,600, but there's value plays. We're going to get to a couple of those later that I think you will be able to fit him. <clears throat> speaking of Justin Herbert, pardon my voice. Uh, speaking of Justin Herbert, he's somebody that we're going to want to plug in. If you plug him in a captain... Now, look, Dak is good and Herbert's good, and we've seen him post big games before. A game like this with 30-plus DraftKings points can be a game where he ends up as the optimal captain. If he completes 40 passes, though, I'm not saying he's going to complete 40 passes, but like that means that there's an awful lot of PPR goodness going around and guys with 100-yard bonus and touchdowns. So like even in a game like that, it's, it's very possible 
that somebody else on that team is going to be the optimal captain. Now, a game like this where he runs into and has 24 points, he might be the optimal showdown captain. If I'm going to utilize Justin Herbert at the captain, we're going to build that group that we always talk about with two of their pass catchers because Eckler projects so well. I'll put Palmer in there for now. We're obviously going to use Dicker, the kicker in that. Uh, Everett, you can use Parham. Anybody that's going to catch pass. Obviously, Quinton as well. Same thing goes for Dak in captain. I will likely be limiting my quarterbacks in captain for this one. The reason is this. Quarterbacks project really well, and we're very much a projection game, but they project really well on median projection. They tend to have a higher projectable score than a wide receiver or a running back or anything else. They've won like 12 to 15% of the overall showdowns of all time, and like they get played in captain, like, uh, sorry, as a captain. They get played at captain like 30% every single showdown because they project so well, and we're a projection based game, and people just use lineup builders. And they don't build these rules to make things happen in such a way. They don't limit their captain quarterback. Uh, they're free to do what they want. I tend to stay on the right side of the math or do what I can to stay on the right side of the math so that when I win, I win the most possible. Give myself the mini, as many bites at the apple as I can possibly get. Same group goes uh, for Dak Prescott. Not going to use Pollard with him. Would use C.D. Lamb. Uh, Cooks has been, I mean, like, so we thought so many great things were coming for this offense. Brandon Cooks, not really looking like he can get separation. Uh, Michael Gallup has run a lot of routes, but has also really struggled to get separation. Uh, downfield, which is always where he had won. It's different post-surgery as opposed to now. Brian Aubrey, the kicker, he's fine there. Ferguson has been uh, solid. Seven targets in three of the five games so far this year. Any pass catcher is going to go into that group. And we'll build the bring back group, uh, like we're going to talk about when we get to the Fantasy Labs portion of the show, around skill position players not defense or kickers from the other team when specifically we have a quarterback as our captain now the other captains on the slate the ones that are a little bit more palatable kind of like uh palatable kind of like austin eckler tony pollard is certainly one of them two bad games in a row following three very good games pollard still has big playability people are worried that rico dowdle's playing some snaps and deuce vaughn playing so like uh, He's getting as much work as they can handle. We're going to throw out this game against San Francisco because uh, it, think about it like the Olympics, right? He's had a very awkward season. The Cowboys have not been in very many neutral game situations. They either blew out the Giants. They blew out the Jets. Uh, they somehow lost to Arizona. They blew out New England, and then they got their doors blown off by San Francisco last week it was not even competitive but he's been extremely consistent in the passing game great inclusion routes run yards per route run everything um he has not gotten consistent work in the running game because of the games that they've been in obviously they abandoned the run against san francisco <clears throat> This game was over early and they kind of went with other people. Same thing went in week one. We haven't seen close and competitive games for the Dallas Cowboys. And this one does project to be just that with an awful <clears throat> competitive and high scoring potential game. I don't know if my voice is going. I'm going to try and make it through this video. And I apologize for constantly having to clear my throat or coughing or whatever. So please bear with me. And I appreciate you guys sticking with me through it. It's been a long day. I record this on Sunday afternoon. I'm recording it later than I usually do. I usually do it about halftime in the afternoon games, I'm doing it right after the late games, just because that's the way my day shook out. Pollard, clearly a solid captain. CeeDee Lamb, also a couple of disappointing games, seven, six, and five uh, for targets for CeeDee Lamb. When your other guys are Brandon Cooks, Ferguson, and, uh, a, a hobbled Michael Gallup. I don't know how else to put Michael. He just can't separate. He's got no separation down the field from anybody. CeeDee Lamb has to be a double-digit target guy. He has to be uh, a 10-plus target guy. He has seen. We've seen him do that for stretches in the past. They're just not calling his number. He's not the primary guy. Does a good job of getting separation in the short and intermediate. Does have talent downfield. They can move him to the slot and outside. They just have to do a better job of scheming him up and getting the ball into his hands because he is their best outside playmaker. And when they utilize him along with Pollard, they are very difficult to deal with. Now, the Chargers, a team that has not done a good job at stopping basically anything this year. So this could be a very 
Like very much a get well game. We need to see a line more along the lines of this, where they throw the ball and force feed CD Lamb. 13 targets. I'm not saying he's going to get 13 every week, but good teams find ways to get the ball into the hands of their playmakers. And when you have a guy who wears 88 on the Dallas Cowboys, playmaker is something that comes to mind. So you've got to be able to try and get him the ball early, often, whether it's on the first drive, whether it's a two minute drill. However, he is your most talented weapon in the passing game. Uh, and you have to find ways to get him there. If I'm going to use him in the captain, we are clearly going to be uh, tiling, tying Dak Prescott to him. And on the other side, the same thing goes for Keenan Allen. See the difference in the box scores here for Keenan Allen versus the ones for CeeDee Lamb? Nine targets, 10 targets, 20 targets, five targets in a game where they beat Las Vegas. So like they only threw it 24 times that game. If you are not going to throw the ball to your best weapons in the NFL that exists in 2023, you're just, you're not going to win a lot of games. So like they've done a fantastic job of it. The perfect DraftKings player, uh, any wide receiver who has the ability to get open uh, and has a quarterback who is going to get him the ball as often as possible. So Keenan Allen seems to be one of those guys who is always open in the short and intermediate, not really a downfield threat. He can get loose from time to time, but it's really not his game. He's more along the lines, him, Amon Ross, St. Brown, guys that live in the short intermediate underneath roles uh, where they can get stuff done at about 10, 11 yards per clip. Perfect. And we can easily tie Justin Herbert to him. Let's head over to underdog fantasy. I got a quick two for right here. Tony, we're going to go with both running backs. Tony Pollard over 20.5 receiving yards and Austin Eckler <clears throat> over 48 and a half rushing yards. As I said, I think that he is going to be deployed in full. I could be wrong. If you don't believe me, go with the uh, lower. If you think I'm crazy, it's fine. You don't have to do what I do. <clears throat> go with the lower if you don't believe me. However, make sure that you pick up your deposit bonus. Rumor has it that they're up to now, once again, a $500 deposit bonus on your first deposit to the site. Use code ALSMIZZLE, A-L-S-M-I-Z-Z-L-E, to claim up to a $500 prize on your first deposit to the site. It's usually $100. Somebody pinged me yesterday and said, hey, it's up to $500 now. That's pretty darn awesome. So if you saw $500 bucks laying in the street, you would try it, right? If you don't have an account... Go check it out. See what the, bo the bonus is. Deposit the maximum to get the maximum bonus. You can play whatever pick you want. I'm going to play this one for 100 bucks. Higher on both. Try and win $300 on Monday night. Go over and check out all the great stuff they have over at Underdog Fantasy. And let's get back to this slate. I got two plays. Down board. Right? We talked about the first one. I don't think that he's a sneaky play, like, at all. Quentin Johnson is either going to be somebody that people are going to, if Palmer is in, people are going to want to play Quentin Johnson because they want to be there when uh, the rookie scores his first touchdown and say, see, I've loved him since the combine. I watched this kid play at TC, like all that stuff, right? Everybody wants to be there when the guy scores first touchdown so they can be the one who has played him on his first big fantasy day. But if Palmer doesn't play or if this injury to Palmer persists throughout the day and it will because everybody's going to be on pins and needles waiting for inactives Quentin Johnson's going to have an elevated percentage in tournaments like everybody's going to flock to him even if Palmer's active people are going to make the argument that he's active and not really active so they're going to chase Quentin Johnson and if Palmer is out Quentin Johnson's like in every single lineup because he provides you with touchdown upside a big receiver pedigreed talent uh and, and an accelerated you know, uh, just a larger target market share, more snaps, more routes, more targets, uh, big time upside. Two guys that I think are extremely solid, way down board, as I said. I'm going to go with one. He's run about 30% of routes the last two weeks. Remember, remember, every point matters in showdown. He has scored zero points the last two games. We're trying to scrape the bottom of the barrel here to find you like a guy that's probably going to be under 20%, maybe under 15 or 10%, but that can allow you to unlock everything else on the lineup. And if he happens to catch one, look, three targets, four targets for a $200 player over the last two weeks is solid. As scary as that sounds, Showdown is a completely different game and a completely different animal than regular DFS. I would never play Luke Schoonmaker in, in regular full slate DFS. 
but in showdown for 200, you're telling me he might catch a ball for 12 yards. Maybe he gets two targets and one catch for six yards and a touchdown. That's a game winner. If he happens to wander into the painted area, obviously you don't want to catch a zero. You don't want to get this goose egg that he's gotten the last three uh, games, but 30% of routes on Dak dropbacks. He is on the field more uh, specifically with the injury to Hendershot. And one more for you. We got, obviously, watch this as well. Questionable for, for Monday, but Parham has been their goal line guy. Usually it's a running back, but they let Gerald Everett run around the field uh, and run a bunch of routes and play a bunch of snaps. And like, it's basically, it, he's the Jerome Bettis of tight ends. No targets, two targets, two. You remember that Jerome Bettis game where he had like four carries for, for one yard and three touchdowns? Like something like, this is like 10, 12 years ago. That's Donald Parham. <laughs> three touchdowns on seven targets on the year. He only comes in in jumbo package. He only plays around the goal line because he is a massive human being uh, and gives them an advantage. 2,200, you're betting on a touchdown. If you have Donald Parham anytime touchdown, try and sneak him into a lineup and see if you can get that seven points plus yardage at 2,200 for your lineups. Let's go over to Fantasy Labs. If you do not have an account over at Fantasy Labs, you wanted to get a discounted subscription for their great lineup building tools, projections for every sport. NBA is coming along, NHL just starting, uh, NFL, college football. You can get their all sports package. Or if you're just an NFL daily fantasy player, go to smizzle.tv slash labs with an uppercase L. That will get you the discounted membership or the only place to get the football only. Here are the rules that I set for every slate. I start here. I will change these as we kind of move along uh, from slate to slate to, to kind of change things the way that I want them to look. But typically where I start, pair my captain quarterback with two of their pass catchers or kicker. This is the group I was telling you about before. Pair your captain quarterback with at least one uh, skill position player from the opposing team, wide receiver or tight end at captain. I'm making sure their quarterback is in that lineup and I limit to at most one defense and kicker from the same game. If you think that a defense is going to be optimal captain, or you think you want to play two defenses and two kickers and everything else in the same lineup, you play however you want. But the math says that that's on the wrong side of it, even though short-term, anything can happen. Specifically, if the Giants are on a showdown slate, go ahead, play defense wherever the hell you want. And then the rule that I build to make sure I'm getting running backs and wide receivers who are less held, because there's going to be a lot of ties when it comes to showdown. Uh, you want to tie with, if you're going to win, you want to split with as few people as possible. So let's force some low percentage players into our lineup. You can do this with one that's under 30%. Make a second rule where there's another one under 15%. So you're forcing two differentiated spots in your lineup. Play it however you want. Apply these settings. We're going to generate 150 lineups and just realize that it's not going to be as easy as going to Fantasy Labs and clicking the generate button and all of a sudden just printing money. You're going to have to spend some time messing with your allocations, making sure you have the right combinations uh, and correlation that you want across your lineup. So I wish you the best of luck this Monday night. Look out for another video right there. He's a legend.